Hello, everyone. Welcome to the closing session of PETS 2023. We're going to begin uh, with the awarding of the 2023 PETS Artifact Chair. All right, thank you. So this will be the second time ever we are awarding an artifact acknowledgement for excellence in this missions. Uh, Last year was the first iteration, and essentially how this works is based on the initial artifact submission, whether it was code, data, whatever, everyone's under consideration. The reviewers give us some recommendations on how awesome they think the award is, and then myself and my co-chair, Pasan, make a short list before finally arriving at our final award here. I just want to highlight before I announce it, all of the artifacts that you see that have been accepted and are showing up on the program. Each author put in a great deal of work to make sure that these were accessible and reusable for the community. And I think that we should all very much appreciate that because it's helping science for all of us and our privacy research. And with that, I have no way to make a drum roll, but <laughs> that works. The winner is HE Layers, a tile tensors framework for large neural networks on encrypted data. You can keep clapping because I have to say a lot of names. Eheron uh, Aroni, Alan Adir, Moran Baruch, Mir Drucker, Gilad Iso, Ariel Prakash, Lev Greenberg, Rami Masala, Guy, I'm sorry, Mashkowicz, uh, Dov Mirik, Haim Shal, Omri Sosino. <laughs> Ooh, sorry, I definitely got that one wrong. Please tell me how to say it correctly when you see me. Um, please come up. I know at least one of you is here. Ah, <laughs> thank you. And there's one here for each of you and your co-authors. So thank you for your... Thank you, Bailey. Next, uh, we will award the Andreas Fitzman Best Student Paper Award, but uh, before we do that, uh, Roger and Paul wanted to um, uh, briefly talk about Andreas and his contributions. Yes, so how many people here met Andreas Fitzman at some point? Okay, great. So look around, and all of these people have interesting stories about Andreas in the past. People asked us to share a couple of them, um, and there are many more. So one of the neat things about Andreas, one of the great things was he was such a great communicator in terms of uh, taking complicated things and saying them very clearly and simply, not just in terms of technical uh, topics, but going to talk to policymakers and the European Union and explaining just clearly the facts, uh, no need to persuade once you explain, explain something clearly enough. So that was a, a great start. Uh, he, so his grad student created PETS back in 2000, Hannes Federoth, and then uh, Paul and I were at that initial PET before it was even named PET. And in 2001, uh, we were talking to Andreas Fitzman and saying, that workshop last year was awesome, somebody should run it again. And you know that word, somebody. So I remember Andreas turned to me and said, you will never have more time than you have now, you should do it. And I'm thinking, I just graduated a year ago, what do you mean, why would I run a... Um, and then Paul is like, yes, I would like to do it, but uh, I don't have enough time by myself. So the two of us together combined. Yeah, I had just uh, come through, I think I chaired like five conferences in the last five years, and I said, I'm not doing another one. And Andreas just looked at the two of us and said, do it, so yeah. Yeah, so he uh, helped us make PET 2002 happen. He was the general chair and host for PET 2003, one of the other in Dresden. Uh, one of the other uh, special things about Andreas was back then each PETS that happened was its own separate conference and you never know until a few weeks before if it's really going to happen, is something going to fall through. And every year Andreas said, give me three weeks of warning and we'll have it in Dresden. So don't worry, you will always have a backup, which he, one of the things he cared most about was growing the community and helping everybody understand the importance of uh, privacy technologies and uh, uh, 
generally like continuing the concept that is pets. So uh, with that, ask the people who had raised their hands and us for more Andrea stories, um, and I'll hand it back to Voucher to uh, unveil the award. Thank you, Roger. So this year, Nina and I were chosen to <laughs> figure out good candidates for the best paper award, best student paper award. So how we went about this is that based on recommendations from the program committee, like there is this sneaky checkbox that you don't see on your reviews that says, is this paper potentially award worthy or definitely award worthy? We took that information, we made a short list of 15 talks that we have both been attending. Um, so a big thank you for all the session chairs that were totally on time, that let us sort of switch between tracks out every now and then. Um, so we attended these talks, we took the nominations, and or, I mean, there were no nominations, but we took the reviews into account, what the program committee said about the papers, we attended the talk, we listened to your talks, and, and we used both what the reviewer said as well as how well the talk was delivered to then finally select a bunch of papers. And then as a short note, you might see that there are some potential conflicts here. If that showed up, um, one of us took care of that um, while the other stayed out of this. Okay, um, so I just want to make a quick comment. I hope you'll forgive me for this um, before we jump to the fun stuff. Uh, I want to make some few comments about talk quality, and I'm saying this because um, this is an important component to, to the sort of decision making that goes on here. And I'm saying this also a bit more broadly um, than just uh, some, some of the speakers from the candidate papers that I think we saw a few too many talks that violate the most basic concept of uh, well known rules of thumb about a, a, a a good talk. So if you'll allow me just to repeat the most basics because I will forgive the students, uh, your advisors should be telling you this. Um, the basic problem is too much content on a slide. Uh, when you show me a slide with eight graphs, um, you know, I tune out. Um, most people can't absorb an enormous amount of content in 45 seconds. So one graph per slide is best, two maxima, make sure the audience can read the x and y axis, you know, enough said. Uh, I saw some tables with 30 or 40 numbers in a single slide where they didn't even highlight the one number you want me to remember. Um, keep your tables to like, you know, six or eight elements. <laughs> um, please check your font size. Remember, these are big rooms and, you know, your slides should be readable by more than the people in the first two rows. Um, and, you know, a rule of thumb, no more than 30 or 40 words on a slide. So I am just saying this because, you know, the purpose of the talk is not to tell your audience everything. I know you worked hard, I know you want to share, but really you want them to remember two things that they're excited about, so they actually go and read the details on their own. Okay, enough said. Let's go to the fun stuff. So, um, first we have a few runner-ups, and the first one is... Okay, convolutions in overdrive, uh, maliciously secure convolutions for MPC. And the award winners are Mark, let's see, let's see if I can get this right, Ravinius, Pascal Razert, Sebastian Hessler, and Ralph Kusters. Will you please come forward? <laughs> forward? Anyone of you still here? I, I guess none of them are still here. Okay, they'll get their certificate in the mail. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> so, as you might have realized, right, we did do this last minute, so please do come up, but we don't, unfortunately, have certificates to hand out to you. But I would say, <laughs> let's... <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congrats. Okay, so the next runner-up, so by the way, Runner-ups and winners are like in arbitrary order. Um, next runner-up, not your average app, a large-scale privacy analysis of Android browsers by, I think I'm going to stick with first names, Amok, Alvaro, Julian, Ashwin, Martina, Narceo, and David. Amok is not here? Okay. 
All right, and then the last runner-up is Story Behind the Eye, Glyph Positions Break PDF Text Redaction by Maxwell, Anusha, and Kirill. <laughs> and now the winners. Okay. So now over to the winners. So the first one, again, in no particular order, Researchers' experience in analyzing privacy policies, challenges, and opportunities by Abraham, Mikun, Selin, Lee, Anne, Shomir, Gina, and Florian. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, the next one is, I think one thing we actually didn't mention in the beginning, but um, we decided this year because the program is quite large. Uh, the goal with these awards is to sort of, rep, you know, um, capture top four or five percent, approximately, something like that, but with a lot of papers this year, that allowed us the flexibility to pick a number of awardees, and that was good because there was a lot of, a lot of good papers. So the next one is uh, Locks, Protecting the Social Graph in Bridge Distribution by Lindsay and Ian. I hope that they are watching. I hope they're watching, yeah. Um, and then the final one is Everybody is Looking for Something, a Large-Scale Evaluation of the Privacy of OAuth Authentications on the Web by Jana, Tom, and Walter. That is it. Thank you so much. Um, we saw many talks. Again, many good talks. Congrats to everyone. So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone here for contributing to PETS. This includes all of the participants that we see here today. Thank you so much for coming, both in person and online. I want to have a special call out to all of the authors who submitted their amazing work. We have a lot of papers here, but there were a lot more than that that were submitted to PETS that were absolutely fantastic, and we, uh, the program committee did an excellent job of making some very tough choices. Um, the program committee members, all 152 of them, let me mention them by name. No, I won't do that. Uh, the senior PC members, the artifact review committee members, I'm not sure why there's a question mark there. I guess I forgot to look up how many there were. Uh, 45? 45? Okay, really? 45? That's a, okay. All 45 artifact review committee members, uh, 236 external reviewers, uh, however many, one, two, no, a lot of participants here, and uh, 123 speakers. I want to call it a special thanks to the Hut Pet Chairs, Rebecca and Luke, the Pet Award Chairs, Emilio and Dolly, the Publication Chairs, Wijia and Durav, the Web Publicity Chairs, Kat and Matilda, Matilda, excuse me, the Artifact Chairs, Bailey and Passan, the Poster Chairs, Gunesh and Amog, the Rump Session Chair, Roger, the Speed Mentoring Chair, Nadim, the Sponsorship Chairs, uh, I can't read that, uh, sponsorship chairs, Steve Murdoch uh, uh, and Susan, the infrastructure chairs, Roger again and Ian, and the stipend chairs, Tariq, Mertuza, Susan, Valisha, and Awash. I want to give an enormous thanks and, uh, to Carmela and Kevin for being our general chairs and for doing all of the arrangements, uh, along with uh, Matthias, who is our local arrangement chairs. <laughs> I want to uh, also acknowledge all of the really fantastic technical assistance. This is a hybrid event, which is not easy. Uh, and all of the other volunteers, uh, student and otherwise, who helped with the administration, registration, the streaming, the uh, signs, the, the, you know, the lawyer things, uh, and, and handling all, all of that. So th thank you, all of you, uh, for helping out and making this event possible. And, and finally, where are you? You're, you're there. Yeah, you didn't run away yet. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to um, recognize my absolutely amazing uh, 
uh, co-chair, the senior chair, Michelle Masaryk, for her enormous contributions uh, for the last uh, two years uh, to PETS, putting together not only last year's PETS, but also this year's PETS, and training a far less competent junior PC chair, that being me. Uh, thank you for your enormous contributions for everything that you've done for this conference. And um, it's a shame that uh, you, know, you can't continue on, but you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure Michelle is celebrating, but, but thank you. Uh, just as a note, about a year and a half ago, uh, Michelle called me on my, my phone and, and I made the mistake of picking up and she asked me if I was willing to do this and I will never take a phone call from her again. <laughs> uh, thank you also to, uh, to our uh, sponsors uh, who uh, this money goes to um, help this event get put together and also helps uh, assist those uh, uh, who otherwise would not be able to, to travel uh, to be with us today. Uh, PETS 2024 uh, is going to be in uh, Bristol and online. It's another hybrid event. Uh, those of you who submitted your uh, issue one papers, notifications uh, should be arriving on August 1st. Uh, we, uh, as with uh, this issue, uh, this volume of PETS, we have four issues. The deadlines are exactly the same, so this... Uh, was easy to put together. The deadline is, uh, for issue two is August 31st, and then the end of November, and then uh, the end of February. Uh, the general chair for 2024 in Bristol is Awash. Are you here? Okay, well, he's doing a lot of work, so it's thank him. And speaking of annoying phone calls, I uh, managed to call Zubair and convinced him to, to do this with me next year. I don't know, you're, yeah, there he is. Okay, so th uh, thank you for, for running this next year. Um, for 2024, we are just getting started. Um, there are a lot of openings. Please consider volunteering for various opportunities, uh, including the stipends, award committees, safe spaces uh, folks, uh, and more. If you go to the CFP, compare all of the different positions for 2023, and notice that there are way more than there are for 2024. That's just because those positions are open. Uh, so if you see something missing and you want to help out, please talk to myself or Zubair or email the pet board uh, the pet board members can be found on the pets webpage. Uh, pets 2025 and beyond. Uh, consider making a proposal. Um, the criteria for hosting pets, as I understand it, is having reasonable registration fees. Please don't ask me to define what reasonable is. Uh, a major international airport and um, a walkable setup uh, for a hike or some similar event. Uh, you can express interest. There's a uh, open call for this and the way this works actually how does, how does this work? They get in contact with a pet board member and they will more um, uh, competently tell you how this works. Uh, Hut Pets is tomorrow, uh, so, so please do attend that if you can. Um, and finally, I'm not sure if this was meant as a joke or not, but Kevin asked me to mention that there are many sheep around uh, the university and uh, to my fellow Americans who have to travel back to the USA where they ask if you've been ar around barnyard animals, uh, that'll delay you, so stay away from the sheep. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, with that, thank you so much for attending PETS, and I really hope to see you next year in the UK. Take care.